Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, for, you, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Azri. I'm one of Clyde and Nikki's daughters. Clyde's over there, Nikki's over there. Uh, I've witnessed a lot of baptisms in my life here at Cornerstone, but I never imagined that I'd be standing on this side of the mic. Um, but by God's grace, I am. Amen. Amen. Um, I praise God for not only saving me, but for also saving two of my closest friends who I've known from the womb, um, Royale and Nini will be getting baptized with me today. Um, I'm extremely encouraged. Um, now, if you know anything about my family, you know we like to write lyrics, so I decided to write my testimony in spoken word form. Um, this is not for the praise of man, um, though I hope it blesses you. Uh, my main concern, however, is that it glorifies my Savior. So, I've been here for 16 years. I'm 18 now. I practically grew up in this church, and I sat under, sat under the sermons. I took notes and asked questions. I served in many ways, but I was here because I was forced, because I didn't have a choice. I put many gods before me. Enslaved by the lust of this world, I made an idol out of myself and technology, fashioning a god after my own image. I was quite the little Pharisee, but as I began to understand who God was and what he required of me, I came to realize he wasn't who I wanted him to be. And I was angry, and though I'm ashamed to say it, I profaned and took his holy name in vain and tainted it. I had a form of godliness, but I denied its power. Behind the scenes, I led your kids to death. I ridiculed the young ones who pressed into the kingdom. And God says it'd be better for a millstone to be put around my neck, and I'd be thrown into the depths. Mm -hmm. I attended church pretty religiously, and even then I couldn't say I kept the Sabbath holy. I was here, but I wasn't. I heard, but I didn't. Didn't hear because I wouldn't, and I wouldn't because I couldn't. A foolish daughter, I brought shame to my father and gray hairs to my mother. I dishonored my parents with my behavior. Hatred in my heart, I must confess I was a stone-cold murderer. I fell for the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I committed adultery in my heart, and it came with a price. The fool in the proverbs says stolen water is sweet, and I robbed God of his glory and the purity he intended for me. I deceived myself. I would tell myself that if I was one of the elect, then God would save me. And if he didn't, it was all right because I knew that I had rightly deserved and earned to burn eternally. And I used this as an excuse to covet all that was my neighbor's, willing to sell my soul in exchange for this world and what it had to offer. But the wages of sin is death, and none of God's commandments had I kept. That struck a fear in me like I had never felt, because if God had dealt the penalty due to my, for my ungodly deeds, Isaiah 45, 23 says, Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. I couldn't imagine the fear of having knelt, proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord before being cast into hell. But the Lord was very gracious, and he had much mercy. Last year, I became very anxious about the unrest in the country. He used this as an opportunity to open my eyes to the reality that Jesus is coming, bringing back to mind the text that says the day of the Lord is coming like a thief in the night. Kept awake, and the clock reads 3 o'clock, because I knew if I wasn't right with God and I died in my sleep, I would wake up in the next life burning in the melting pot. I cried out to God. I turned from my ways to serve him. I love the Lord, and now I want to obey his commandments. I trust that he'll help me overcome the world, and I see a difference in the way I respond to my sin. I know I sin because I'm a sinner, not a sinner because I sin. Instead of trusting in myself, I know to now rely on him. Who am I that you would reveal righteousness to me? And what is man that you would let yourself be beat and scourged? Why would he leave his seat at the right hand of God to wear a crown of thorns and be nailed to a tree on account of my deeds? What am I? A wretch who's been redeemed and is an heir with Christ. So how could I not obey all of his words? We all fall short of the glory of God. I just praise God that though perfection is a standard, Jesus Christ took my place as my mediator. He took my heart of stone and gave me a heart for him. I'm a slave to Jesus Christ, no longer a slave of Satan. Galatians 2.20, I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I live, I live in light of the precious sacrifice of Christ who stooped from glory to save haters of God like me. He changed my will, gave me new affections. I'm born again. In him, I'm a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. And I know I got a time limit, like three to five minutes. So I want to take the time to encourage my brothers and sisters, specifically the fathers and mothers, prayer works. I can't even count the times this church has prayed for us. I pray your hearts are stirred to continue his work teaching your kids in the fear and admonition of the word. I pray you spur each other on, and I'd like to thank the elders for shepherding this flock. And I know that there are some among us who aren't counting the cost, 
I just want to say it's easy to talk the talk, and it's but by the Spirit you can walk. The truth is you can't fool God who at that last day might say he never knew you. Repent. Today is the day of salvation. The Lord is gracious. Don't suppress the truth in your unrighteousness. He says, come to me who are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Put your hand to the plow and don't look back. Amen. As we. Earth is shaking. That's a I like to thank God uh, for this time. I know me and my wife, we, we pray for our children. It's just a prop. <laughs> <laughs> and to see the Lord answer our prayers, you know, I, I, I give Him all the glory for that. Amen. Um, so, parents, continue to pray for your children. Continue to teach them. Um, be patient. Endure. God is faithful. Amen. God is faithful, and we give Him all the glory for this. Amen. I love my husband. <laughs> so I was, uh, Nikki and I were talking about it uh, one night after you come over to uh, RBF, or the college group meeting at uh, Tyler Lauren's house. And uh, I had the first conversation I had with Asri after Asri believed that she was converted. And it was like talking to a different human being. Wow. Yeah. Just, uh, awesome. Like talking to Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hearing, uh, hearing what the Lord had done, hearing the way that she was thinking, just um, amazing. And we give all praise to, to uh, the Lord for that and yeah, just the work of God's Spirit in you. So it's been a, a real joy to see Asri already growing like a little weed. Praise God. Uh, <laughs> growing in the Lord. Not a weed. Uh, Lord. Yeah. 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 Weed. 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 Like no, no, girl. Well, in spiritual stature, not physical stature. <laughs> Growing spiritually. Um, it's just been a real a real joy. So it's a blessing today to deal with that as a sister. It's a blessing to be able to call Asri's sister. And so, based upon Asri's profession of faith of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, turning from sin to follow him by faith alone, and, and pledging to or committing herself to serving as a member of Cornerstone Baptist Church, it's our joy to baptize you, our sister, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, baptized with Christ in death, and raised to walk in the